It's Monday, November 15th, Thanksgiving week for you, The Amazing Spider-Man 2 for us. This is Mostly Superheroes. Hello and welcome to Mostly Superheroes, a weekly pursuit for the world's best stories. With an emphasis on live action superhero stuff, I'm your host Logan, back here again in the basement, St. Louis, Missouri. Happy Turkey Week to you. We have a really fun episode for you today. Lots of fan mail, some news from Disney Plus Day, and a review of The Amazing Spider-Man 2. You know these co-hosts, let's introduce the first one. He gets nightmares from the Joker, we call him the Giggler. Andy, how are you? That me? I'm good, buddy. How are you? I'm great, man. Um, as the listeners know, you had a week long vacation. You went to you went to Nashville. You had some downtime. How are you feeling? Extremely depressed now. Oh no! <laughs> <laughs> it went the opposite way. No, it was a great week, but just but is it like it's one of those things where you're off for so long that you realize that you'd be really good at being off the whole time. Oh, man. Yeah. I reached some personal <laughs> records of, of of some things of just mostly just laziness <laughs> in this week. Yeah. Um, but you're back. Yeah. Buddy. And uh, Stephanie had a good time. You guys went to Nashville. How was the city? It was great. That's that's it's a fun place. Not anywhere that like obviously we have so many like kind of places like that, that we can drive to that are pretty where we're kind of lucky, I guess. But mm-hmm. we, we go there like every few years. But um, we won't basically just i don't know same thing you do when you go out of town all the time eat drink make bad decisions yeah see some new places there's like a bar every 10 feet in, oh my the, in God. the place i I'm... spent so much money but it's all right <laughs> don't yes. worry hey well here you are back at work yesterday was a great day full of uh wendy's breakfast we had some st louis pizza wings and then dairy queen so this was like nice. probably a multiple DoorDash day yep it was well good it sounds like you spent your time off and down happy to have you back Ladies and gentlemen, give it up for our new guest that's now coming back for his fifth episode already. Scotty Scoop. Hey, how you doing, guys? Gobble, gobble. It's turkey time. Turkey time. Um, and I actually just had turkey at your house. Yeah. We had Friendsgiving. Yep, two different types. Yeah, great job. You were recommending a certain turkey. Uh, yeah, go, go to Costco, get the pre-cooked, uh, smoked turkey. Okay. That was delicious. So it's pre-cooked. It was pre-cooked. So not frozen? It was not frozen. It was refrigerated. Okay. Pre-cooked. I took it. I put it in the pan, mm-hmm. and I put it on the grill, and I let it go for about three hours. Three hours. And it was, uh, it was delightful. So like, you can take this. Can you like buy this turkey right away and cook it right away? Oh, it's it's already cooked. The real, the real turkey, you got to let sit for a few days. Oh, yeah, yeah. You have to, if, if it's frozen, you got to let it thaw for days. Well, this might be a great solution because if you're listening right now, this episode's dropping the week of Thanksgiving. So you, if you're listening right now and you're going, oh, shit, I didn't get a turkey. What do I do? Maybe this pre-cooked turkey from Costco, if yeah. they're not all gone. Oh, yeah. But it's Costco. It's Costco. It's probably got a whole shipping container full. Yes. And, Scotty, I had to shout out your shirt because it's perfect for today. Yeah. The Amazing, Amazing Spider-Man. Spider-Man. So that's, that's the one. That's it. That's the one they're going for. Yes. The old, uh, this is a classic. Uh, Todd McFarlane. Mm. Yeah. Very cool. I yeah. uh, can't wait to break it down with you. Thanks for coming back. You two are here, and we have a lot to be thankful for, mainly all the superhero stuff that's been coming out all this time. <laughs> oh, man. Uh, so with that, uh, we have some fans to feature. Let's talk about them. Fan mail. We always feature fans first on mostly superheroes, and we want to hear your voice. We have a studio phone at 754-CALL-LOG. That's 754-225-5564. Give us a message, shoot us a ring, all those things that we want to hear from you. Do it to it. And we do have a voicemail to feature here shortly. But first, we wanted to highlight our YouTube channel, getting a lot more traction in the video world as of late. And we've had some commenters, some new folks coming in that we have not featured on the show before. Excited to do it right now. This first one at at us actually comes from Scotty. You're what you watching last week. Critical Role. Oh, yeah. YouTube, Twitch, uh, Dungeons and Dragons, basically voice actors uh, playing the game and then releasing episodes of them playing the game in all yeah. the different ways. Big Sniper. That's Biggie Sniper, actually. 
That's S N one P three R. Clever. Yep. I like that. Had a comment here, Scotty. I want to see if some of this made sense to you. Critical Role cast members are in everything. Yeah. McCree. That correct. That's Overwatch. Thor. Black Widow. Marvel's Avengers game. Ellie and Abby. Last of Us. Another game, right? Yep. Polina Petrova. Call of Duty Vanguard, etc. Yeah. Is this all true? Yeah. Hundred percent. Like I said, if if you've watched a uh, a cartoon, an anime, played a game in the last twenty years, you've heard probably all of these people. Wow. So, yeah. So these these guys are known. I mean, this is a random commenter that found our video of Critical Role out there, and he knew. Big, yeah. Biggie Sniper, appreciate the comment, man. Thanks for reaching out. And uh, sounds like you're a big old nerd, just like Scott. Oh yeah. Just nerding out hard, uh, and I'm glad he's checking out most of superheroes. And another YouTube comment and uh, regarding another. Uh, review we did again just last week these are fresh eternals just talked about the movie and can't we talk about this piece right here this is actually regarding the end scene so i'm going to give a big spoiler alert right now for eternals you do not want to hear this fan mail if you have not seen the movie there's your warning okay so we talked about this at the end of last week scott and andy where at the end of eternals i mean we're talking the big ending here they bring uh erisham the big god celestial shows up and he pulls some celestials from Earth and he wipes their memories. And the big argument was, was there three or four of these folks and who was it? I didn't think that Sprite was in there because Sp- Sprite gave up her powers to become human. Well, someone agrees with me. I'm not saying that they're right and we might need to pull out the phone just to check. But Emmanuel Chang, Emmanuel Chang on YouTube says, I remember that scene. Erisham didn't take Sprite. She is human now. By the way, you guys have a great taste. This movie is a masterpiece. Masterpiece. F the critics. <laughs> Boom. Hell yeah. All right. This guy. Emmanuel Chang getting fired up by Eternals. Yeah. I love it. But guys, can we revisit this? Do we think? What are you holding? Are you holding steady, Scott? I could have swore they took all four of them. I swear that I, that I think they only took three. How I do thought, we? How I do thought we, three too. Maybe well. maybe we'll look this up during the yeah. break and bring it back around coming sure. up, and we'll confirm because the listeners listening at this point are like, yeah. "Well, you got to tell us." Yeah. Um. All right. So stick around for coming up. We'll definitely clear this up. Emmanuel Chang, though, he agrees, and either way, he's checking out most of superheroes. Man, thanks so much for reaching out. Appreciate you folks on YouTube. Great video content, great playlist, and it's all available and linked at mostlysuperheroes.com. Next up, last piece of fan mail. We had a lot to be thankful for this year including a nice $25 gift card that we won at Well Spent Brewing, and we decided to share it with a fan. You might remember, we did a contest online. You guys entered at Instagram, Facebook. You even wrote us in at MostlySuperheroes.com slash contest, our new contest page. But we have to pick a winner, and there is only one. We have one here, Brian T., here, right here in Maplewood, St. Louis local guy. He won. Congratulations, Brian. Nice. Cheers to Brian. Cheers to Brian. You can follow him on Instagram at B-R-T-R-I-G-G, B-R Trig. And we got a nice photo for you guys that are watching us here on Facebook and YouTube. And Brian even called to tell us things. Here he is now. Hey, Mostly Superheroes. Uh, Brian here. Thank you for the $25 gift card to Well Spam Brewery Co. I can't wait to use it. Uh, always a pleasure uh, listening to your podcast and uh, seeing what new things you have on Instagram and just social media in general. I look forward to the new material. Once again, thank you. Maybe I will see you there, and I'll talk to you soon. Bye-bye. Brian on Instagram. All right. Bottoms up. Beautiful. Yeah. I mean, 25 bucks, it goes buy a few beers. Why not? And yeah, Brian, maybe we'll see you there. Uh, thanks for entering. We love hearing local folks, worldwide folks, wherever you're listening. You can find all of our contests at mostlysuperheroes.com forward slash contest, and we'll keep doing stuff like that all year round. Let's get in the news. News and rumors. Disney Plus Day. Pretty slow news week. Yeah. <laughs> You just skip it. Did this uh, even happen? I um, Disney Plus? I'll, I'll tell you what. Nobody was sleeping more on Disney Plus Day than me. I didn't oh, know man. it was coming. I didn't know what it was about. And then all of a sudden, I'm on my TV on Friday after work. Ignore, like I'm working during the day. Five o'clock rolls around. The internet has exploded in the Marvel Cinematic Universe specifically, at least for me. 
had some major announcements, but a lot happened on Disney Plus, and we already did a nice uh, preview of all the things that were going to be coming. I have the list here in case we want to revisit anything specific, but I wanted to make this more about us and what we saw out there that got us most excited. Scotty Scoop, let's start with you. How did Disney Plus Day go for you in 2021? What was the most exciting thing you saw? And uh, just general thoughts on the day overall with it being a new virtual event. Man, I, I couldn't believe all the news we got. I was really only expecting um, content on the on the service. Mm -hmm. You know, just a couple of new movies, uh, a couple of new shows. Uh, but man, they just they really came with the teasers. Yes, for almost like like a dozen shows. Just, and you're talking like just Marvel. Yeah. Like Marvel alone, all the new logos, major announcements. We're definitely going to talk about these um, and had a little featurette even. Yeah. That wasn't just like, oh, uh, uh, announcement. Yeah. It's like, here's a 14 minute stitch yeah, video. Like sizzle of reel. A sizzle reel. Yeah. Tying all the Marvel shows together past through future. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Giggler, oh. what'd you think? Oh, man. I'm so excited. Some of these things, like we've, we've been kind of been on the back burner for a while but now that we're finally getting like images set photos all that good stuff and now we're seeing like finally teasers it's yes i'm, I'm so excited for the future well let's go down the list i mean outside of marvel because we're going to focus on that anything else that you guys liked about disney plus day i know star wars fans seem like they were kind of upset on the internet because they didn't get their obi-wan kenobi trailer uh, no obi-wan kenobi trailer yeah. um so they were they were out right away throwing tantrums yeah getting real grumpy like it's coming, guys. Yeah, they've. They, don't, don't worry. They're making it. You're gonna. You're gonna get it. Uh, I did watch a little bit of the Olaf uh, explains Disney oh, movies, man. and it's exactly what you think. Yeah, and it hilarious. Can, it's pretty I, funny. I've heard good things. It's, too. it's it's an easy like definitely like I think more for the adults. Oh yeah, it's what quick two three minute episodes. There was like five or six of them. Yeah, yeah. If, if you're anyone, but especially a young kid that hasn't seen like Little Mermaid, like you'll be very confused. By yeah, the first one. Um, what else did you guys see that you that you like? Maybe from the other franchises, because I definitely want to focus on the the Marvel shows. Um, Moon Knight. So we're sticking with Marvel. Yeah. I like it. Let's just get right into yeah, it. Yeah, I don't. I didn't have. Yeah. I didn't really pay much like I didn't too really much attention see to this. a lot I, of. The I thought other it was going to be what Scott said. Just like they're releasing a bunch of new content, might have a few announcements, but like this was way bigger than I thought. This felt like almost like a fandom event. Like it did junior sort of. I, yeah, I was very pleased with that, but. I didn't pay attention to like anything outside of Marvel, to be honest. And I didn't really either, which is kind of why I'm looking at you guys. I was like, is there <laughs> anything else that's worth talking about? No. Nope. All right. So, Scott, Moon Knight, is, your, is that your title? Moon Knight. That's my title. And uh, uh, Mark Spector. Uh, it's going to be real dark, uh, almost Daredevil Netflix. Oscar Isaac. Uh, yeah, type type of show. Mm -hmm. And, man, I, I, this is going to be uh, a, a great show, I think. And I'm I'm really surprised it's going to make it on Disney Plus mm -hmm. because this is a real gritty character. Yeah, it's like, how you are they going to rate this? How yeah. gritty is it going to get? Yeah. How dark will it get? Um, other titles that we have that we're ex I'm excited about, She-Hulk. She-Hulk, yeah. Get a teaser. Let's so ready. get yeah. into it. Bruce, Bruce Banner. Bruce Banner I mean, honestly, it. Professor Hulk yeah. is in it. Not injured arm anymore yeah. or yet, mm -hmm. depending on the timing exactly. of this show. I was thinking but, that everyone kept saying, like, oh, his arm's healed. I was like, are you sure about that? Right. Yep. And uh, what's that character's name? Is she Hulk? Do you guys know? Like that character? Uh, Jennifer Walters. That's right. And is, it's like his, her name. It's like his niece, Bruce's yeah, niece. Yeah, they're or like something? cousins or something like that. Um, I think she, she turns into the Hulk, uh, uh, she Hulk, through a, a blood transfusion. Like it's on purpose. Yeah. Like to save her life, maybe. Yeah. Yeah. And that looks pretty good. You didn't get the full look at She Hulk. You get like a little bit of her her back, her legs. Um, she's a lawyer. Uh, it's got that lawyer type branding, mm -hmm. so you know you're gonna get kind of that. Uh, um, what were, what were we talking about? Franklin and Bash. Yeah, <laughs> you know? case of the week. <laughs> Rizzo kinda. Rizzoli, Rizzoli Rizzoli and Isles. Isles. Um, you're gonna get a little bit of that, but on a Disney Plus show in the MCU. Mm -hmm. I mean, you talk about like uh, uh, a different look from inside the courtrooms in these places. Yeah. that'll be kind of an interesting. Yeah, and I think take. we're gonna probably get some other characters because I think she's uh specifically a uh a, like a superhero attorney yes taking that's it, that's on it. like superhero cases oh man that's awesome so we'll get to meet all yeah. sorts of people yeah um excited for that one andy what about you uh let's to, to round out the live action the uh secret invasion yeah there's that's... no there's no trailers or anything i guess we did see nick fury 
looking She's older now still photo he, he yeah. looked older well no he looked it was it was action but it was like just like it looked like it could have been any from anything okay yeah. you know because it was just his face looking at the, the eye. camera he had yeah, the, the white eye the milky eye yeah. yeah he's like i'm not covering it up anymore um i guess i just assumed that was from this because i know that that's one of his bigger uh associations so yes um but other than that just all the the, the animated things are just off the, off the charge like spider-man what spider-man freshman year freshman year Scott yeah. put it in a good we talked about this over the weekend you were saying like i mean from the brand and everything this is going to be tom holland spider-man think, but yeah his a, origin or his just younger years because we cut in he'd already been spider-man for yeah, who knows how long don't, because they didn't explore it at all no tony just picks him up in civil war and yeah. he's like oh here's i found you online um so it sounds like this might explore that how cool um what if season two? Yeah, exciting. Um, Loki season two. Loki season two. Can't uh, wait for this. Well, uh, we have a new Agatha. Sh- Agatha. Oh yeah. Harkness. House of Harkness. Yeah. Yep. Is that what it's called? Yeah. That'll be interesting. How do you guys feel about that one? Uh, I don't think anybody asked for it. I mean, but we'll take it. I love the character, so I'm I'm in. I didn't know she needed her own show like, yeah, so quickly. That's how yeah. that's how I feel, but <laughs> I'm sure it'll find a way to connect with all this in, in some capacity. Of course. That, <laughs> that's the only way they do it. Um, what about new characters? We got, I mean, there's other stuff in there too, but Echo? Echo, yeah. yeah. Um, should be a, a, a part in the uh, Hawkeye that's series coming up. Okay, yes. That's right. And uh, yeah, we talked about that one a little got, bit. Uh, oh, Armor Wars. Armor Wars. That's going to be James Rhodes. That's live action, right? Yeah, I think so. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, you. T- I mean, you talk about what I'm most excited for. Obviously, Loki season two, but Secret Invasion live action, and then uh, what, what? What were we just talking about? What was that one? Uh, Armor Wars. Armor Wars. That one. I mean, yeah. what are we talking about? Right. This is gonna be awesome. Ironheart was another one. Ironheart. Yeah. I mean, surely that Ironheart's gonna be like introduced in Armor Wars. You would. Think, uh, I would think so. Yeah. And then spun off. Any other ones? We're missing some, right? Um. Uh, Marvel Zombies. Marvel yeah. Zombies. Yeah. I'm looking into comicbook.com. Yeah, Instagram X-Men 97. From the other day. Oh, I mean, what we haven't even talked about. Yes, yet. that's that, good call. <laughs> let's just hit it and give it up right now. X Men 97. Oh man, I can I can hear the theme song playing. Oh baby, and they're just in the background. And you said it right. They're just picking up the story. Yeah, it's it's. I think it started in 92, ended in 97. And here it, it, they're just going to pick it right back pick, up. Bring back the voice actors. They're bringing back a lot of the voice actors. They're same animation style. This is bananas. Yeah. I told Carrie, I go, yeah, this is called X Men ninety seven. She goes, oh, it's for you. And I go, it's definitely yeah. yeah. I, I was <laughs> I was ten. Yeah. <laughs> like I was ten when this came out. Like what in the world? This is crazy. Um, can't it's wait. Beautiful, beautiful, bold, and I don't know. Like it, it, for me, it's just like foot's on the gas so hard at this yeah. point that we're just getting everything you ever wanted. So yeah. thanks. Glad like, to see the animation studio kicking into high gear. Jesus. Yes. And, uh, you know, for a long time, DC has been, uh, they've been winning that war, the animation war. Mm-hmm. And uh, I'm glad to see Marvel. They're stepping it up. Step it up. Yeah. Some competition. Um, did we miss anything else on the Marvel shows? There's two more here that I, that we didn't specifically touch on. I am Groot. Yes, made him Groot. Yeah, obviously excited for that. That'd yeah. be great. Whatever. Uh, yeah. Miss Mar- Miss Marvel and Miss Marvel. Marvel. Mm-hmm. She's, and you got some footage from that too, yeah. like her seeing like Captain Marvel in the news or something. She's all pumped up. Yeah, I'm and intrigued. I, that'll that'll uh, spin into the the movie. I do believe. Yes, Marvels. Definitely. The Marvels. The Marvels. Yeah, yeah, Captain Two, Captain Marvel Two, renamed to the Marvels. It's gonna mm-hmm. be a bunch of these these folks. Um, I mean, after after, after all this. I, I I'm just I'm just shook. I just can't even believe it. Like I mean, just to see these titles coming out and the new titles coming out every day, um, it is overwhelming. It's just staggering amounts of shows. And uh, at the end of the day, I'm excited. Yeah. And I think a lot of the stuff has been really good. But I think you know, Scotty, we talked about this over the weekend too. That the challenge that I see that lies with all this ahead of of Marvel is you got to make stuff that's really good and like keeps the viewer's attention and connects to this big story that you're claiming connects in a really fluid way. But also you're making shows, you know, that might be more appealing to certain groups of people, certain demographics. And it's Disney at the end of the day. They got to hit a big audience. The challenge would be making something truly good that isn't too 
pointed or targeted at right. any point. You're trying to hit everybody, but you're also trying to make something for everybody. Mm -hmm. So it's going to be an interesting experiment. I guess we'll just talk about all of them. Yeah, sure. I'll um, be here. Disney Plus Day. I mean, I, I tweeted about it, man. Like, I guess this is just like the best day of the year. The only thing is, we didn't. Well, there's no things about the movies. Like, this mm -hmm. was about TV. There yeah. was nothing about the movies. That's a good point. Like, the movie, the reel didn't even bring in anything about the movies. This is only the TV shows. And I loved how they did it, though. How they, like, just weaved everything together. And then they, like, get to the end of What If. And they're, or the end of Loki. And then it's like, all right, this is What If. These are the realities. I was like, this is everything we've talked about. I didn't watch that. I need to watch this. I just watched. Whoa. I, I saw everything on Twitter. That's it. Like, That's the thing. On, oh, like, okay. So everything you, on Twitter diced up and like diced up. Thing. Oh, it's all one. Yeah. All right. And they like they narrate it like pretty good. Yeah, little appetizers is right. what you got. I'll be right back. So, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so it's 14 minutes. You watch that. They also got the new Legends. They have the Hawkeye one now. It's the longest one. It's 10 minutes. All right. Um, They have um on the this is now switching Marvel, but they have uh well, they have the making of Shang-Chi assembled. So that's on there. IMAX versions of a lot of your Marvel flicks. Um, not all of them, yeah. Because I always like kind of bouncing around. It's kind of sporadic. Seems like some of the later ones, not yeah. so much that the older ones. Um, Star Wars, though, the one thing I saw that was pretty interesting is they did like a fifteen or twenty minute special on Boba Fett, oh. which is just like the whole history from the first time that he was like thought of and conceived, and like what the original plan was to what actually happened, um, and then the lineage of the character. Yeah. So that's... I definitely. I think you should watch that before yeah. we get the book of Boba Fett. Yeah, priming up. It's coming. Six weeks. Is that happening this year? Uh, December 29th, I think. So that show is right around the corner. And as soon as Hawkeye's over, we're going to have yeah. something else. The book of Boba Fett just going to be on TV and we're just going to be watching it? Yep. <laughs> yes, <laughs> When's sir. The Mandalorian again? Uh, they're filming that right now, I, I believe. So Season three? I would imagine summer. Obi-Wan? Obi-Wan. We haven't even... We haven't even talked about Star Wars forever, and we're about to talk about it all over again. Yeah. Rewatch. Yeah, I was going to say. Uh, I mean, I know it's man. us three are biased, but you got to think Disney Plus, man. They just, Disney just knocking it out. <laughs> they got it all. Yeah. <laughs> they got all the cool stuff. Uh, all right. Can't wait for Disney Plus Day 2022. Any other final thoughts on the day from you guys? <laughs> like you said, can't wait for next year. Yeah. Exactly. Rewatch Shang-Chi. It was great. Yeah, watch it in IMAX. If yeah. you're at home and you got a TV that has IMAX on it, get home, put on Shang-Chi all over again. All right, let's talk about what we're watching. What you watching? What you watching? Let's tell you what we're watching, what we're reading, what we're doing each and every week. And we want to hear from you at MostlySuperheroes.com or in the Mostly Superheroes Facebook group, exclusive free private group where you can share what you're watching this week. Andy, tell us about this podcast. Yeah, man. A been, podcast. I, I like it. I have not had a lot of uh, new shows that I've watched recently. I've been watching a lot of like episodic weekly TV. So with like Sundays are just built up with Yellowstone and Dexter now. So um, this uh, this podcast got me through uh, basically all 10 hours of my drive to and from Nashville. Nice. Steph just somehow randomly found this on on Spotify. Uh, smart list hosted by Jason Bateman, Sean Hayes. That's the guy from uh, Will and Grace. Will and Grace. Will and Grace. Yeah, yes. I didn't know his name, so I'm just specifically pointing that out. The other two, I feel like, no, are more household names. Are, am I am I correct there? Well, and Will Arnett. Yeah, Will Arnett. Yeah, Will Arnett. Yeah, Jason. no. Whenever I told Carrie about this, when you sent it to me earlier, I said, uh, "Yeah, Sean Hayes. You know, the gay guy from Will and Grace." <laughs> yep. Because I couldn't think of anything else off the top of my head, but Same. like everyone that clicks immediately. Yeah. Okay. But um, so, yeah, this is this is uh, three funny guys that just uh, started a podcast during COVID. Does that sound, Ooh. sound interesting? I'm sure you're not looking in the mirror. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Um, they started this. So this is a recently made this, podcast. Yes. This See, started, I didn't know that. This started in July of last year. Uh, they've had about 70 episodes. It comes out weekly. This is exactly like our podcast. Everything you just said sounds they, like you're describing it, us. It's insane. They have so basically <laughs> except their major they celebrities. Have, they have a uh, a special guest each week that only one one person knows about, and uh -huh. basically they like I'm assuming they do it via Zoom or something with these people. Uh -huh. And all of a sudden, like like for instance, if Jason Bateman, like the first one we watched was Jerry Seinfeld. Yeah, so it's, oh, he nice. basically does a little intro and says, "Hey, what a guest! Uh, oh my our guest gosh. this week is has this accolades," and they like try to guess, and then basically they just bring the person on. And it's just 45 minutes of these three with the guests talking. They just talk about their history and the business, just anything 
anything. It's hilarious. Anything at all, yeah. Everything, like, these people are just hilarious. Like, I... Yeah, Jason Bateman. I mean, Sean Hayes is hilarious in himself, but, like, personally speaking, Jason Bateman, Will Arnett, like, immediately... I mean, I mean, I watch a lot of Arrested Development. We yeah. basically watch it on repeat at this point. Oh, yeah. And I'm just seeing these two just literally having the time of their lives on a, on yes. a podcast. Yes. Is there video? That's exact. I, I'm not sure yet. I, I think it's audio only right now. Uh, like, it, it's... The, the guests are so... They had LeBron James. We oh listened gosh. to like Adam Sandler, Robert Downey Jr. Wow. Um, wow. Will Ferrell, Seth Rogen. He listers. Okay. It's, so it you're is, really plugging it in big. here. Like they literally, I, look, I just was like, oh, who'd they have this week? The episode that came out today, the United States Attorney General. Merrick Garland? Uh, yeah, that sounds right. Um, as we all know, equally. No, hold on. <laughs> Surgeon General, sorry. Oh, Surgeon General. The Surgeon Dr. General. Dr. Vivek Murthy. Oh, like, yeah. Would him. you ever know who that is? Was yeah. it funny or was it, it, it? I didn't listen to that one, but. In informative, I'm yeah. sure. Oh, yeah, exactly. But, but still, they can't help but have their humor about things. Oh, yeah. And then, I mean, they're also just intelligent folks, so it's probably yeah. just pretty good. All right, yeah. smart list. I imagine everywhere you get podcasts. Exactly. Where I'm, do you listen? Uh, Spotify. Listen to Rob McElhaney and also Ryan Reynolds. Nice. So, so I clearly, I think just hit after 10. hit after like the most 15 most popular people. And they're like, we'll, yeah. we'll just take off. Yeah, yeah. I'm scrolling through here and it's insane. The names like Brian Cranston, Conan O'Brien. We should get a couple of those guys. on Jennifer here. Aniston. Yeah, yeah. I'll just I mean, I definitely am a Conan. pro at sleeping or uh, slip slipping into DMs. Yeah. So I'll just message all these folks and be yeah. like, I heard you were on this other three guy podcast. <laughs> <laughs> Um, all right, uh, Smartless, you really enjoyed it, Andy. You got you to and from Nashville. And you... I'm loving it, and I will continue to watch. I'll probably just go through the listing, listen to the ones that I like, and then yep. as, as it goes, kind of just vibe it out week by week. Scott, yeah. have you heard of this? Are you uh, no, this is all the first time I'm hearing of it. I'm going to check it out for sure. It's, yeah. on, it's on my list. It's something yeah. everyone can listen Like, who doesn't like to laugh? And That's literally all, all they do. You learn a lot about like showbiz kind of too, like where, yeah. where people got their origins from. Like you want to know how Adam Sandler got a start in the business, then listen to this. All right. Really cool. Cool, man. Good share today. I like this. I like bringing some podcasts into it. Smartless, Jason Bateman, Sean Hayes, Will Arnett, go get it where you get podcasts and let us know if you're a fan of the show. Sounds like it's a newer one out there, so it might be spreading the word here, um, but I cannot wait to check it out. And really nice podcast art. I'm really digging that. Yeah. I like the little rainbow vibes. I like it. All right, Scotty, you're up next. Tell us about this one on Netflix, Red Notice. Red Notice. Uh, man, probably one of the biggest titles Netflix has ever had. Uh, I looked it up. I think they had a budget somewhere around 180, 200 million. Mm, 200 million. And I saw this too, by the way. So, um, wow, okay. Yeah, you're talking about The Rock. Yep. Gal Gadot. Yep. Ryan Reynolds. And so there's, I, there's 100 million. Yeah, that's it. <laughs> right. <laughs> um. Uh, globe trotting um action adventure buddy comedy mm -hmm. uh caper movie mm -hmm. um and it, it's pretty much exactly what you would think it is yep um i thought it was funny i watched it with uh one of my kids tegan um she's 13 she laughed great she thought it was good yeah um you got ryan reynolds doing ryan his thing. reynolds doing his thing you know and i'm sure they just gave him carte blanche to say you know yeah here's half a script yeah Take off. Here's the scenario your character's in now. Yeah. <laughs> Do your thing. Yep. yep. Give us some quips. Yeah. Give some good quips. Um, and yeah, you got the rock in here. Kind of. Yeah. You got to kind of doing a different thing. They did a. You know what I noticed that they did in this movie? They did a dress up the rock like in a funny outfit. Yeah. <laughs> I feel like that's like a, a move sometimes. Yeah. Where they run out of an idea. They're like, yeah. We'll put just... the put the muscle guy in the in the sparkly <laughs> sparkly sweatshirt, '80s sweatshirt with the unicorn or rainbow on it. Yep. Yep. Uh, Gal Gadot kind of coming in here being a fierce uh, little uh, thief, yeah. you know, just doing her thing. Her and Ryan Reynolds are kind of like um, uh, uh, art thieves. Yeah, they're number, art thieves. Number one and number two. And they butt heads, thieves, right? Yeah. They're, they're like uh, rivals is what rivals, I was trying to say. Yeah. Um, what did you think of this? Um, I thought it was good yeah. for Netflix. It's a Netflix movie. Mm -hmm. um, I think if I would have paid, you know, $15, to see it in the movie theater, I might have been like, ah, mm -hmm. you know, maybe it wasn't worth it. Um, Netflix, worth it. Uh, why don't you throw a rating on it? Uh, I'll probably give this like a 2.8. 2.8, that's solid. Yeah. Um, yeah, I'll give it a, I think I said 2.9 upstairs, but now that I'm thinking about it, like 2.6. Oh. 
Um, because I mean, yeah, if you want to, you'll if you like these actors, you'll genuinely just have like fun, like for part, like a lot of the movie, sure. because you know them all, and it's just they're nice to look at, yeah, and they're and they got like funny things here and there, There's some decent action. But the movie itself was just very just yeah. predictable, mm -hmm. cookie cutter. Oh, let's set this up for Red Notice 2, 3, yep. 4, and 5. Right. In a way that didn't get me excited. No. Like, I don't want that to make it sound like I'm not into sequels. I'm yeah. just, I'm only, I don't, I only want to see it made again if I enjoyed the first one. But uh, Andy, after me and Scotty just kind of talked about it, shit on it a little bit, what are you thinking? Uh, I'll give it a shot. Yeah, someday, he's maybe. <laughs> he's going straight home it. and watch Probably it. Probably not. <laughs> Probably not. I mean, I mean, Ryan Reynolds and hey, The Rock, man. though, are they going to Two end hours. Yeah. I'm not, I'm not saying it's a waste of time. That's true. Yeah, no, I'm going to watch it. Like, I'm just not going to, like, run home to do it. Yeah. yeah. That's fair. Walk. Walk yeah. home. And it's, also, it's, it's Monday. Below Deck comes yeah. out on Monday, guys. And honestly, <laughs> us sharing this, hopefully this makes you, listener, you hear these names. You're like, you know what? I will. Ch it's on Netflix, like we said. You're not yeah. going to, you know, it's not hard to You've all to. got Netflix. We know you do. It's the number one, I think. I think yeah. The, oh, yeah. Like, the, that most. said the biggest, biggest, you know, premiere on Netflix ever. And I bet. Yeah. I mean, look at it. You got Black Adam. You've got Deadpool. You've got <laughs> Wonder Woman. Uh, yeah, Green Lantern. Green Lantern. You mean? Yeah. Sorry. <laughs> sorry. Um, Real uh, DC lineup there. I was also thinking like Gal Gadot's character from Fast and Furious, but I can't even remember her name. Yeah. <laughs> this this actually just reminded me like part of the Ryan Reynolds podcast on Smartless. He talks about. I, I'm assuming he was filming this movie at the time because he was like, "Oh yeah, every time they're talking about The Rock," and he's like, "Every time I." Uh, talk to him or talk about him. I refer to him as Dwayne the Rock Johnson in full every, <laughs> every, every time. single time, even to his face. And I'm like, I love that. That yeah. seems like it adds up. Um, all right, Red Notice Netflix listener, let us know if you've seen this movie. If you haven't, still we want to hear from you at mostlysuperheroes.com or on the studio phone. Uh, again, one of the top movies on Netflix ever with these names. We're not too surprised, but we want to hear what you think. So let us know. Last but not least. I picked it up. He's back. Tonight's the night. Season one, I guess, of Dexter New Blood. I'm saying that because it says season one on Showtime. Huh. Not nine. Interesting. It's like, this is New Blood. I mean, it's in the name. And Dexter is back. Weekly drops every Sunday. Two episodes down. Just watched this yesterday. I know, Andy, you have seen it. Scotty, you have not. I have not. So this, Spoiler free. Yeah, we're keeping this totally spoiler free. Um, and the takeaway is this. He is back. It's a new story. If you saw how Dexter ended, time has passed, I would say, roughly about 10 years or so. Okay, so they're basically going like almost real time. And that's, that's kind of how it is. Yeah, it's kind of yeah. like, yeah, it's kind of like, because when you watch Dexter the first time around, it was timely mm -hmm. and the technology and whatnot this is going to catch up to kind of like more modern time but again don't want to give anything away if you saw where it ended i will just say this spoiler free take i'm in yeah i'm in i'm having fun i think michael c hall looks great i didn't realize how much i missed this character i love that the way that they're handling certain things but i'm also curious how the remainder of this season will go and where it's going to go after this, if anywhere. I'm just curious if this will be a limited series, if it's going to keep going, and I'm excited to see what happens with this one. I will say the branding for this is like totally different. Like It's like this Dexter New Blood is like in your face, big font, really jarring, almost a little cheesy. Yeah. Yeah, it's just kind of weird. And th But that's it's really a separate point of the show, because I am like pretty impressed with how the show's going so far. I'm, I really am. But Andy, what do you think of this spoiler-free take? I love it. Two in. I'm so yeah. Ex I'm I'm double in. You're I, what? I'm double in. You're double in. Yes, <laughs> I'm also in. Because uh, I mean, this is what probably a, near my top five shows of all time. Absolutely. Yeah. So it's gonna take a lot for me to be out. Yes. But I mean, I'm I'm intrigued. There's so, they're doing some things here that I've wanted to see for years. Yes. Let's we'll say that. Yeah. I, I I can see that too. I mean, it's still early days, so I think one thing I can say that's not spoilery at all is. I really am curious to see if and how they'll bring back anybody from the show. And I would and that's just me being selfish of like yeah. will it happen, won't it happen? I just don't know. Yeah, I was gonna say it's any any familiar faces yet? Uh yeah, you get you get basically one familiar face that's kind of there presently, but okay. again, don't want to spoil it. Well, anything. technically two. Technically two. Well, I wasn't counting Dexter. We're getting some flashbacks. Oh, okay, you're right. You're right. You do get someone else, but 
Yeah. Again. Just uh, watch. Uh, yeah, just watch it. <laughs> I'm gonna, just watch I'm, it. Because you're asking questions, and I'm <laughs> I'm thinking about the listener right there, and I'm like, if it were me, I'd be like, shut up now. Don't go any further. Yeah. All right. <laughs> how many, uh, we know how many episodes we're going to get? That's a question. 10, 12, 13? No idea. Come on. I have no clue. I didn't look it up because I'm just, I'm hoping for like 20. <laughs> we need, we need PC Mike. Don't worry. Here we go. We got Giggler on it. Okay. How many episodes? Android Dexter, Giggler. New Blood. <laughs> oh no. You're on it. You've got it. I'm going to guess. It. Here, you got to guess? I'm, I'm going to say 12. And I'll say 10. 10. 10. It already says it? Got it. It says that we are set to end in January 9th, 2022. Wow. Okay. Um, all right, well, then you're gonna get 10 episodes, two down, eight to go. We gotta fly in here. I'm gonna get it with my hand, it's like oh, impossible. Yeah. Oh, be careful! Oh, oh got God. him! <laughs> got him! <laughs> that was a lie. Yeah, I'm gonna cover it up so you guys don't have to look at a dead fly. <laughs> but I just got that with the bad hand. Yeah, y- you guys are on fire. Hey, the swatter just got some new blood on the table. Yeah. <laughs> all right, Dexter, new blood, it's on showtime. Premiered November 7th. Couple out. Go watch it. Let us know if you're watching it. Scotty Scoop, you're going to wait to binge this, it sounds like. Uh, man, uh, I was going to. But now. <laughs> Look what we did. <sighs> man. Well, what's cool is if you guys, if we're all watching it and you come back in and it's been, you know, this is the week before Thanksgiving. We're about yeah. to be off. We got Hawkeye coming. You know, if you could watch four or five, we could come in here and do like a mid-season breakdown. I was going to say, I might, you said uh, January 7th? 9th or something. 9th? Like yeah, 9th. I might wait till like maybe December 10th and just watch and them all jump, right before the, jump in the and get my one month subscription to Showtime. That's actually a smart move. If and you're not then, wanting to spend the money on Showtime and you just want it for one yeah, month, you could yeah. you'll kill this in a month. Yeah. Oh, well, I'll catch the, you know, first 5 6 episodes and then I'll catch the the back half. And then you as can, they come out. Exactly. And then you can do what me and Carrie did. We realized that we had to wait for the next episode of Dexter to come out. We're looking at Showtime. And we picked up Shameless, and yeah. we're, we're dropping into where Carrie left off, season seven of Shameless, right. just having a blast. Nice. All right, folks, that's what you're watching. Now we're going to take a quick break. Thanks for sticking with us. Stick around. We're going to talk about a movie from 2014. It's The Amazing Spider-Man 2. We can't wait to break it down. Stick around. We'll be right back. You've heard others, but nothing could prepare you for the shameful stupidity that is the Jock and Nerd Podcast. Here, Imran. So if you offend everyone at once, it all it's a wash. I've covered everybody. Anthony. Sorry, I was texting. Say that again. And Rug Boy. Yeah, whenever there's a snowstorm, my slack hole tightens up. As they talk over one another. Just exactly uh, the same Connor as, as Jay's Terminator. We're talking over each other. It's fine. Sorry. Swear. I had boobies. And ask you for money. Just give us the money. Witness the hubris as they claim to be the world's authority on comic book movies. Who said that? Never said that. You've never said that. Who cares? A jock said that. Comic book, TV, movie, reviews, news, and whatever they choose. Available on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, and wherever you find your favorite podcasts. The Jock and Nerd Podcast. It can't be silly, goofy fun. Seriously, people really listen to this. Uh, Jock and Nerd! The Meat. Welcome back from the break. This is Mostly Superheroes. I'm your host, Logan, back here in the studio with Scotty Scoop and The Giggler talking about superhero stuff. This is Mostly Superheroes. It's time for The Meat. Time for the chunk, the sizzle. It's why you came. It's why you're here. And today's all about a sequel, a Sony sequel, actually. You may have heard of it. Andrew Garfield is back in the amazing Spider-Man 2. We're going to break it down. A little help from Wikipedia, a little background on the movie to set us up before we break it down. The Amazing Spider-Man 2, internationally titled The Amazing Spider-Man 2, Rise of Electro. This is on Wikipedia. Have you guys ever heard that? Never. Rise of Electro? Nope. (laughs) You think that's true? That's not my Spider-Man title. Okay, this is per Wikipedia. 2014 American (laughs) superhero film based on the Marvel Comics character Spider-Man. The film was directed by Mark Webb. (laughs) He's back. Produced by Avi Arad and Matt Tomek. It is the fifth theatrical Spider-Man film produced by Columbia Pictures and Marvel Entertainment. The sequel to The Amazing Spider-Man from 2012. And the it is the final film in this series, even though this movie is a big cliffhanger in itself. We only get the two Amazing Spider-Man films. 
And this the movie actually stars here. Andrew Garfield as Peter Parker, Spider-Man, Emma Stone comes back as Gwen Stacy, Jamie Foxx, Dane DeHaan, Campbell Scott, Embeth Davids, Colm Fiore, and Paul Giamatti, and Sally Field comes back as Aunt May, and Peter Parker is going to try to protect Gwen Stacy as he investigates his parents' death while facing off against another mysterious villain. This is The Amazing Spider-Man 2. Just to set us up with the budget, this thing had $230 million to work with. Exactly the same budget as the first movie. Two years in between. The first movie made $758 million. How much do you think this one made, Andy? About the same. $709. About $50 million less than the first go around, but still not too shabby in terms of box offices out there. Let's break it down. How many times have you seen this, Scotty Scoop, and how'd this rewatch go for you this Uh. time? Man, this is going to be maybe only my third or fourth watch, and it's been at least six years. It's been a while. Um, It was okay. <laughs> that sounds <laughs> about right. I, I would retitle it uh, The Mediocre Spider-Man. Yes. Like, for having amazing in the title, yeah, it's kind of okay. Um, Giggler, how'd this rewatch go for you, and how many times have you seen it? About the same for me. I, I honestly may have only seen it Besides today, maybe one other time in my life. Yes, I think, and I th- now I remember why. Mm-hmm. <laughs> but uh, and whenever this thing was coming out in 2014, I feel like, and we all like, tell me if you agree or disagree. But I mean, I remember being feeling like the same exact way about the first one. Just like, okay, they're just gonna make another. They're gonna they're gonna keep going with this guy. Yeah. I don't know. I don't remember why I, I I don't even know if I saw this in theaters. I mean, like, t- was I that down on it then? I don't, I don't know. And I feel like 2014, like, I mean. Oh, was, I did for sure. You went in saw in theaters? Oh, I saw it in theaters for sure. I feel like I would have because I'm, yeah, at I'm that point, one. I wasn't missing anything yeah. superhero wise. You know, I was lining up at the door for midnight screening mm-hmm. of Fantastic Four. Like, I, I didn't care what it was. Um, You're probably right. But here we go. The Amazing Spider-Man. We're not going to break this thing down all the way. We're going to pretty much hit the high points, the low points, and all the things we thought about it. And the first thing we're going to do is we're going to admit when we're wrong. And we basically said that there's a lot of like loose ends in the first movie that don't get tied up in this movie. We were just completely wrong. We yeah. just didn't remember the movie. Um, let's just start off with the first piece. We're like, oh, they don't. They never explain anything about the, his parents or that plane crash. Nothing. Well, guess what? The opening sequence of this movie pops up just like the first one did. A flashback to the other side of the story, not just the parents leaving little Peter Parker, but what happens. Uh, essentially... I mean, it's still not that intriguing. Right. It's like a cool fight scene to the death on an airplane, and his parents do die. I feel like they led us to believe that maybe one of them was going to survive. There was the one parachute. One parachute. Just yeah. one parachute. Um, but no, they go to their death. Peter uh, Richard Parker, this is his dad, sends off one big file. He's He was working with Oscorp, and this was his big last thing to send this video to his son. We're going to find out more about that. Peter Parker in this one, picking up off the last one. Gwen Stacy, he promised her dad that he wouldn't date her, and he's very much dating her in this one, and he's very much feeling very guilty about it, seeing her dad like everywhere yeah, he goes. All over. We got Andy. Is he's like emo Spider Man, I feel like. You think he's emo Spider Man? Yeah, like I mean, obviously that's we we know who the real emo Spider Man is. Come on, yeah, we know but who that title belongs that's, to. That that's Bully Maguire. But like he just I feel like he just the whole movie, he's just like intensely dramatic at all times. Yes. Yeah. No matter what it's about. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And just and also just intensely awkward with his aunt and awkward with Gwen. And I don't know if it's an Andrew Garfield thing or it's an Andrew Garfield thing. He's just kind of sure. a he seems kind of like a sleaze ball. He's well, he's a very <laughs> he's a, he's a serious actor. And I think he was just overacting the part. Yes. You know, he. I don't think he had fun with it. Yeah. Like, and it's a Spider-Man movie. Yeah. Like, come on, man. Loosen up. Loosen up a little bit. Um, And while in the midst of all this, while he's trying to figure out if he's going to date Gwen Stacy or not, the big, big this decision, Um, we meet a new character, Max. Max Dillon. Max Dillon, played by Jamie Foxx, is in this film. Nerdy. I'm a nobody. Yeah. Nobody likes me, but Spider-Man saves me one day. He, he works at Oscorp. Of right? course. Of course, because who doesn't? Well, who doesn't? Everyone, <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> even kids at the high school work at this yeah, place. That's, yeah, bring them in. And that's essentially the only people that can be involved with what's happening in this movie are Oscorp people. Yeah. 
Except for we do get the opening sequence of Spider-Man being Spider-Man trying to make it to his high school graduation, and we get Paul Giamatti driving that <laughs> semi. I'm sitting yeah. here in the first 10 minutes, and I go, that's Paul Giamatti. Yep. Yep. I go, Andy was just, just talking about him in Billions. He's in the, he's in the Amazing <laughs> Spider-Man 2. Right. And he's a way for, different person. Forgot all about it. And committed. Oh, yeah. He was Maybe the best character. 100%. He's in it for 30, 30 seconds total. And he, he is he is just yelling that he's like a big Russian guy. Yeah, it's all tatted up. All tatted up. And I was like, this is a villain right yeah. here. Give me this guy. Um, But yeah, we meet Max. And I guess the big thing that's happened to Oscorp now is they're into uh, sustainable energy. So the first one was about animal animal hybrid genetic testing this is like hey we can solve the electric problem by putting a bunch of eels in tanks and yeah. taking their electricity yep that'll support the grid that'll support the <laughs> grid um i mean it was kind of a when's this guy gonna get his powers yeah well this guy will get his powers right away yeah max jamie fox wanders up into this place slips off a rail falls into the eel tank and becomes Electro. Electro. They do a great job of making you feel bad for him at that point of just how much of a just outcast he really is. Oh, yeah. Sad sack. Isn't that one like know, sad as, he, as sad as you can be? It oh, was yeah. His, <laughs> it was his birthday when this happened. His right. Everyone it, just abandoned him at work. And he bought himself his own card. Yeah. <laughs> that guy from the office is his boss. Yes. Oh, yeah. BJ Novak. Yes. BJ Novak. Yes. <laughs> yeah. And he's Alistair like, Smythe, a uh, Spider Man villain. Yeah, was, something that just didn't go anywhere. Really, just a guy that's named that. Ah. Yep. And he, yeah, he's like, they're all getting on the elevator, and he's like, "Hey, Max, uh, why don't you go deal with the eel problem?" And he's, he's like, "Why do I have to stay?" <laughs> it was sad. <laughs> it was so. It was sad. It was really sad. But it was also like, just the most like, I was like, this is totally written by someone who's never been in an office building in their entire life. Oh yeah, like 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 not ever not everyone goes the elevator at once. It's not like oh why do I have to stay and everybody else has to go. Like this is Oscorp. Yeah, like you just be at your desk. Like nobody knows. <laughs> <laughs> um, who else do we get in this? I mean, uh, Gwen Stacy's dad. I mean, he's in this movie quite yeah, a bit. Uh, shows up. What's his name from uh, Rescue Me? Dennis Leary. Dennis, Dennis Leary. Leary yeah. he, I mean, he made it. He's in the. He's in the credits. I mean, he's just staring down Peter Parker yeah. all the time. Aunt May is still pretty bummed about Uncle Ben dying. Um, I thought their whole relationship was weird too. Like, just yeah. didn't feel very grounded, and she's just crazy. Like her trying to like get into the bedroom whenever he's in his Spider Man suit, and then him wanting to do his own laundry, and she mm -hmm. like won't let him. Right. I mean, he's like twenty three. Like, yeah, he should be doing yeah. his own laundry. Um. We don't get much callback to uh, the lizard man from the first one, but we do get some of it whenever we meet Harry Osborne's son. I'm sorry, Norman Osborne's son, Harry Osborne. He's in this movie. You know that actor's name? Uh, did Dane? Dean? Dane DeHaan. Yeah. Good job. Um, he's in, what else is he in? He's oh. in that one movie with like yeah, the powers. The superhero kind of. The first person like superhero film. Yeah, yeah. Start with the C. Remember they like videotape everything. That's pretty good. Yeah, yeah. Like it a was dark, a good, good movie. Dark movie. He was like the main uh, bad Michael kid. B. Jordan. Was he? See, in that? I think he was in that. No, I don't, unless we're talking about something different, we might be talking about different things. Either way, I'll though, get it in a minute. Go he, carry on. He does a great job as Harry Osborn. I mean, he's fine. He's just again cheesy. Feels like little kid. Like Chronicle. Can't take Chronicle. Here we are. I would have got there. That's him, right? Michael B. Jordan, twenty twelve in the movie. Nice. Um, he does okay. I just feel like again, I'm just not really buying it. There's, there's no, there's no connection. And when just they like all of a sudden, like, oh, we're friends. I remember. Yeah, like great friends. Right. Like, hey, you know what's not suspicious? Uh, you get announced as the CEO of Oscorp. You're an instant billionaire overnight. All of a sudden, one guy shows up to the building. Yeah. And it's like, I'm friends with the guy. They let him straight up to the board, oh, yeah. board floor. Oh, sure. Oh, you know him? <laughs> and he's like, what are you doing here, Peter? I was like, "What? You, if I was you, I'd be like, I know exactly what you're doing here. Yeah. <laughs> you're here for my money. Yep. <laughs> but it turns out they're old friends from when they were kids. And what do we find out? Harry Osborne is dying, just like his dad, who we do meet in this movie. That actor? He's in a whole bunch yeah, of stuff. Yeah, he's a character actor really? for sure. He's a character actor. He's in th all sorts of things. Yeah, and if you look up the cast of this, and you can find Norman Osborn, and we see him. 
You know, he yeah. was dying in the last movie. Here he is dying again. Remember, he was the one that made Dr. Connors. He pushed him over the edge to say, you start animal t- uh, human testing. Yeah. Well, he tried it himself. He's got scaly, long fingernails. His skin is, I mean, he's as green as a lizard. Yeah. He's essentially like the Green Goblin, but like if he didn't get any cool powers right. and just got sick. Didn't have anything, any limbs to regenerate. <laughs> no, nothing like, yeah, if you would have cut off his finger, he's like, that's pretty cool. Right. But other than that, I feel pretty bad. And apparently this, the Osborne disease, it's a curse. Like his, he's like, is your hand shaking? Harry's like, yeah, it is. So all the Osbournes get this weird disease. What is that? Like Parkinson's? Uh, yeah. Osbornosis. Like that's the only thing I could think is like, I guess maybe something like Parkinson's because like it's like a brain. And it looked like he was getting like lesions or something. Yeah, he starts getting lesions on his side. Yeah. And he's he, his dad hands him all the research to help him study it. Turns out the one thing that could save him is the blood of someone that's maybe been bitten by one of the radioactive spiders. Thankfully. Huh. <laughs> Wonder if we know anyone. <laughs> Thankfully. <laughs> might be able to take care of that. And not only that, but he's like, hey, Peter takes pictures of this guy. Peter, get me this guy's blood. Peter's like, I don't want to give you the blood because something bad might happen. Whenever I was actually thinking, if you guys are as good friends as you say, yeah. just give it to him. Right. Works at Oscorp. He's yeah. dying. Give him the blood. Just give him. And, and like, had he given him the blood? What if? What if? Like, we still don't even know. They should have made it to where, like, he steals the blood. Yeah. And then find out, because they kept being like, or something worse. Right. And then you never find out. because no. Because what's he actually do? Oh, they they found some of the venom stored away at Oscorp, and that's, that's how they got it into him. And the side effects? I mean, he turns into oh, yeah, a he, monster. I mean, more than a monster. A <laughs> goblin. It's, it's kind of like, it's kind of silly. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Like, he's like, ah, Totally cheesy. Ah, Peter. Yeah. It's my least favorite yeah. thing of the whole movie. Like it's like if they someone ba- like dressed up as William Defoe's Green Goblin, like as like and like they did it poorly. Yeah. And just yeah, like a Halloween costume of someone trying to be like a high school student trying to be <laughs> Willem Defoe. Yeah, that they're like, look, I'm the Green Goblin from Spider Man. You're like from <laughs> Spider Man? Spider Man? Which Spider Man? Which Spider Man? <laughs> the good one or the other one? Well, oh, you're the Garfield one. Okay. Right. Um Norman Osborne was played by Chris Cooper. Chris Cooper. Chris okay. Cooper. Yep, that's him. He's all over the place. That's oh, yeah. him. Oh yeah, he's he's in all sorts laundry of laundry list of of accomplishments and, and roles. Um, I will say this, you know, we you know we're kind of like going through the characters. I think is the best way to do it sometimes. But let's get back to Electro. I mean, looks unbelievable. Oh my gosh! And what a villain, really. I was like, man, he. Uh, I was watching it last uh, yesterday, and I was like, man, he looks great, mm-hmm. fantastic, and really, I think the only way they could have gone. Because yeah. if you look at if you look at the classic electro outfit, the green spandex with the lightning bolt, yeah, and like the the sunflower looking yeah, just crazy yellow headdress thing he wears, and here they really just go the straight like blue look. Oh yeah, looks like Mister uh, Mister Manhattan, Mister Ma- Doctor Manhattan, Doctor Manhattan. Yeah. Excuse oh, yeah. me. <laughs> doctor yeah come on he looks just like him even like the way he like comes together with his spine and stuff i was yeah. like that looks really really yeah. cool um i thought the dubstep was a little lame like when they're fighting against spider-man like at oh, the okay. power grid yeah it's yeah like, boom 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 yeah even though i was like thinking to myself this it sounds kind of cool right but like just kind of lame that it's in the fight but i mean looked amazing seemingly seemingly limitless power yeah just ex- and looks great on screen like a, a a villain that really is too much for Spider Man. Oh, for sure. And for that alone, like you know, we'll talk about what we're gonna talk about. You know, why we're talking about this movie is because we're talking about another movie. You talk about a character I'd love to see come back in a way. Electro is one of them. Yeah, because you're talking like maybe high stakes like villain at some point. Yeah. Harry Osborn though. Yeah, they can leave uh, him. Out. Let's not see this one. Please don't show us what. Yeah. Although we could. Probably surmise that it won't be. I mean, I guess we could see multiple. We could. You could see more than the, one. The the how, I love how they re, they had the new uh, No Way Home poster today uh-huh. in the Green Goblins in the exact same spot. Yeah. Oh yeah, it's it looks like they just back there copy pasted it. Yeah, and just were like, Boop. it's uh, and it's like the same helmet and stuff, right? But like, what poster is that? Is that just fan made? No, it's no a real poster. It's, it's from Both Sony of the official posters. They yeah they. Both of the official posters look very poorly made. Oh, boy. Yeah, I know. I was thinking, and then there's supposed to be a new trailer tomorrow. Yeah. 
tomorrow evening yeah okay we'll see oh yeah we'll talk yep. about it we'll talk about it and why we're talking about we're talking about spider-man no way home of course but here we are the amazing spider-man 2 getting back into it and seeing if we can wrap this thing up and we'll get some gut checks feelings and ratings um you know i i think that the 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 fight scenes look really good the cgi is unbelievable the suit the spider-man suit night and day different suits yeah it almost feels like they took a little bit more out of the raimi for sure they have the more uh uh the outline on the suit kind of sticks out mm -hmm. you got more brighter red and uh blue in the suit um the swinging looks awesome great the webs i love the webs uh even the testing the electrical charge of the webs yeah. I thought that was kind of cool yep and Oh man, funny part like toward the end when the when Stacy's like, you know, I'm I'm got I've got to help you. I got to be here to help you. And she runs up to the police chief. She's like, "My dad was so and so." And he goes, "Oh, cool. I'm the police chief now. What yeah. can I help you with?" And she goes, "I need jumper cables and copper wire." <laughs> and I go, "You're in New York." Yeah. There's probably an Ace Hardware every 20 feet. And you're the police chief's like, "Yeah, I guess I could get you that." But I'm a cop. Right. <laughs> Like, is there a crime just, somewhere I need yeah. to help Did you need with? to like, put up a roadblock or like something like that? Like Just pop it in the store and get these things. But anyway, they figure it out. It allows his his web shooters to work around Electro. It's a little wild in the big fight scene between him and Electro yeah. at the, at the, at the power, uh, power grid. Yeah. Um, like wild as in a lot. But I feel like it was all right. What did you guys think of this fight scene? I thought it was awesome. That was pretty epic. Yeah. yeah you cool. got him, you know, shocking from tower to tower. and. Yeah, Spider Man swinging around. I thought it's one of the few things that the movie did well. Exactly. I think is the fight scenes. Absolutely, and chasing him down, Electro like jumping from him, even from like building to building. Yeah, kind of like kind of looks like the Sandman, but just like electric. Mm -hmm. Um, and he ends up beating him in the end. I forget how. Oh, how does he do it? He overcharges him. Yeah, uh, yeah, that's the key, right? He learned with the batteries. If you overcharge the battery, pop, boom. Yeah. Gwen helps him. I mean, this feels like the end of the movie oh yeah you're definitely 100 percent done it's oh with the movie carrie fell asleep woke up and woke up at and that you, part yeah, and she yeah was yeah. like oh good the very end and i was like you click the time and you're like there's still 20 minutes left in this movie yes what happens next and then out of nowhere <laughs> <laughs> that was really good except his wasn't even that good. no yeah. no like yours was too good right and he comes coming in just I love this is what I loved about this. The so they put the venom in Harry Osborne and he starts going through the changes and it's like really messing with him. Like he's like just his skin's changing. He's like to he's shaking and he's in like a fever mess. And in the middle of this, he's like, "Oh, what's this hoverboard?" Yeah. And he just gets on the hoverboard right. mid transformation. Has anyone ever tried to ride a hoverboard? You don't just jump on. I mean, I've rode the wheel ones at your house, yeah. and like I really almost like hurt myself. There was a learning. There's a learning curve. <laughs> yeah, this guy's flying around, no problem. Fresh, Zipping around the fresh air. transformation. Doesn't even need a night of rest. Nope. <laughs> um, and he comes after him, and he says, "Like you know what? You're Peter Parker. I figure this out pretty quickly because Gwen Stacy's there." He decides immediately, "I'll just take Gwen Stacy from you." Yeah. Big fight scene, flying all around, and then we get the church bell. Uh, tower, whatever or the clock tower, this is kind of where they all come together. The hoverboard, he throws Gwen Stacy down. I mean, this is this looks really good. Oh yeah, and straight from the comics right here. And this is straight out of the comics. Yeah, and she's fallen, and he catches her, and he's got her with the web, and he's kind of hanging, but then he's still fighting down, and he ends up getting Peter ends up getting the web around Harry's neck. Yeah, and it's tied within like the gears of the clock, and. Also hanging with Gwen Stacy, the web is about to be pinched off by the same gears. And Peter Peter has to like make the ultimate choice, right? Like, can I kill the bad guy or get him away from me at least and save my gal? And he goes for it. And Gwen falls down super slow. She's very far down the path, and he shoots his web. It the greatest sequence of this thing going through yeah, like gears all the flipping. Gear, everything yeah. just barely sliding by. Has like the Hand reaching out like the web. Yeah, kinda. the little web hand. The little web hand. Like, <laughs> here I come. Take my strong hand. <laughs> it's what, that's how it was. <laughs> and it's going, it's going, it's going. Gets her at the end. Bounces off the ground. Big, yeah. Breaks her back. She's dead. Yeah, it smacks her head. Smacks the back of her head on the ground, on the pavement. What'd you think of that? That was like, man, this. I can't believe they 
they had the balls to do this. We're going to kill her. Yeah. Like, he tried to keep her away. He promised her dad. She was like, I'm going to help with this. Yeah. Why? Right. You were about to go to Oxford. She, she like, got in. Yeah. This is tragic. Yeah, it is. This young girl's future is just gone. And Andrew Garfield's Spider-Man is just, like, I mean, he cries and he's sad and stuff. Yeah, he, he, he did He yeah, did the Andrew Garfield and, you know, really acted out that. I mean, you felt, I felt it. Yeah, yeah. I felt it. It felt like it, it, you got a little bit of realism again. Like, yeah. Peter Parker's just a kid. She's gone. Um, but bold, for sure. And definitely, uh, I mean, I, I kind of like it in a way of, like, listen, if we're going to do this, let's go maybe a little bit comic- literal like whatever happened and let's take it to the third movie right never came nothing um i'm trying to think how this one ends it's her funeral months go by peter parker visits her grave visits her grave forever and ever just like you know really really feeling it quit it, he's he's not spider-man he's not spider-man spider-man's been gone for five months i think five months yeah. five months has gone by crime is off the charts even aunt may like Kind of knows, yeah, right? Again. They like do this, this weird thing where Aunt May. Kinda we could knows. really use that Spider Man guy, that Spider guy. Yeah, Sally Fields, <laughs> she's great. <laughs> um, and then he, she gets. I think she gives him a little speech, and then yeah. he looks up the high school speech from Gwen Stacy, which played back. He found he found it on the little jump drive, that, or little flash drive that said Gwen. Gwen speech. Stacy, yeah, Gwen speech. Nothing else on there. No. Like, just that one video. That's that's how we kept videos in 2014. Yeah, just flash drives. filing your flash, flash drives and Some masking tape on it. The best, the funniest thing to me about it, which it, was, it wasn't meant to be funny, like he gives, she gives this speech that she gave to the high school class about like persevering. Right. And if we go, if we live as hard as we can and we fail, then at least we still lived as hard as we could, which is a great message. Mm-hmm. And it helps him get over the hump. Um, But it just, it felt like. This is definitely a speech for Peter and right. the people there listening, but it yeah. felt like more for Peter. Right. It felt like it was like to one person. Mm-hmm. Um, but either way, that's me nitpicking. He goes back to being Spider Man and we don't we don't see him quite yet, but guess who's back? Oh, well, first of all, we're skipping a big part. Yeah, yeah. The the Go ahead. The the tease. The tease of Sinister Six. Sinister Six. During the transformation in the uh, in the basement, the uh, Oscorp basement, yes, where you saw the the Doc Ock arms just moving on their yeah. own. You saw the uh, the classic vulture wings. Yes, yep. yeah, the vulture wings, and then the last thing you see is the first one to come out. Yep, and guess who's back, folks? Paul Giamatti. Yep, here he comes. The Rhino. Yep. Yeah, buddy. Is that what he's called? That's, yeah. Yeah, These Spider-Man him. villains. The rhino, the lizard, the vulture. <laughs> yeah. Let's give us all the animals. All the animals. <laughs> the aardvark. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> um, and yeah, I mean, this rhino looks pretty cool. Like, big, epic. Yep. He's tearing up the city. Get a young little kid in a Spider-Man outfit. The kid from, like, earlier in the movie comes up. is real brave. I mean, terrible police and parents that just oh, yeah. run out there. <laughs> like, oh, yeah. Just go, oh, my son, he just ran. Uh, we're just going to stop you. Yeah. No, ma'am, you can't go out there, but we'll <laughs> let your eight-year-old boy. Um, He's dressed as Spider-Man. He can handle it. It got me a little bit, yeah. that part. Like, whenever the spider when he shows up and he's like, you know, get on out of here. You did a good yeah. job. And then the big, like, they're running at each other. I mean, epic ending. Yeah. Really. Like, like we're going to make a third movie. Oh, like, this is far from over. Oh, for sure. Nothing. Nothing. Wish it would happen. I mean, that's sort of, sort of, right? Exactly. All right, that's the Amazing Spider-Man two. No one credit scene. Nothing. Yeah, I don't want to say I wish, but you always wish. Yeah. But like the fact that they tease that stuff and it just comes out seven years later in a whole different Spider-Man franchise. Yes. Yeah, like what's happening? Yeah. Um, you did get the man in the hat again. The man that was relieved uh, in Sinister Six. Yeah, uh, Mister Fierce. I do believe. Is that a is that a character? I never heard of him before. Okay. I I don't think so. They also teased uh Black Cat. Uh Felicity Jones was uh Felicia. And I guess could have been Felicia Hardy. Who was that in the movie? Yeah, Fel- Felicity Jones. Okay. When did they tease her? Uh she was in uh Oscorp somewhere. Okay. One just, of the... just working. 
Just as everyone does. Everyone in New York. And New York works for Oscorp. <laughs> um, what else about this movie? Uh, the thing that we so I have, I have something. Please remember earlier we talked about how the the plane scene you, that, that it felt like they're one of them was going to come back. Has anyone watched the deleted scenes from this movie? No, of course not. <laughs> exactly. All right, we'll go. Well, on, go one of them us. is, and I, I I saw this um, on Twitter in the past few days. Um, it is a scene of I, I believe it takes place after Gwen's funeral, and Peter is in in the graveyard, mm -hmm. and his sees his dad there. So his dad made you it. find out no nothing <laughs> about he doesn't say anything about where where he's been or what's going on. But it was just like a, a tease. His dad, like with a with a beard, and and Peter's, of course, crying. <laughs> Dude, this. I mean, I'm sure I would probably cry under those circumstances too. But. Yeah, yeah, but still, <laughs> like, there's it's it's Spider Man though. You're right. It's Peter Parker. Yeah. You're trying to like, you know, he's just not embodying. Like, he's not my Spider Man. No. <laughs> you know. But anyway, so to your to your point though. It, that is exactly what that one parachute was for. Mm -hmm. One of them was coming back. Um, yeah, he was just weird. Like he was weird. Like Andrew Garfield, like with with uh Sally Fields. I I all I all I could think about during this scene. It's like whenever they're both sad and they're like crying. They, they're missing Aunt. Ben, they're missing Uncle Ben, and she's like, "Oh, he wants to like find his parents." And she's like, "You're my boy. You're my boy. Right. I yeah. am your boy, but I need to know. But I need to know. Even and like even that. That was the explanation. Right. Like just so weak. Yeah. You could have said that in a million different ways. Mm -hmm. And he's just got his like head to head with her, and he's like holding her face. And I was like, I just. I mean, I don't know if I'm ever gonna be like holding my aunt like that. Even like my mom, and like in that right. moment, like maybe if it's like, but it wasn't that intense. So I was just thinking, if Sally Fields, like this guy needs to let go of me." <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Like Andrew Garfield, don't I'm Sally Fields, <laughs> right? My boy, my boy. That's my, like I said before. Boy. It's like such such great actors they're they're getting, and it's it just didn't work. Yeah, um, I mean the Harry Hosborn stuff, like th it felt exactly like you know what that part felt to me. It felt to me like all right, well they had Harry in the first one, so we gotta we gotta like make it work. Even yeah, though, we gotta shoehorn him in there, and that's exactly what they did. Um, I mean. Emma Stone shows up again. She, you know, she's she's there and yeah. she's she's doing it. But uh, yeah, let's just do it. Let's get ratings. Giggler, you're up first. Two point five. Scotty, uh, two point six. Wow. Oh, two point nine. Oh, hey, all three. You. How about that? Definitely better than the first one. That's what I was gonna get at. Was I think I? It's just it's. For me, it's miles better than the first one. And that's kind of what I was saying earlier is like it would have been cool if there was a third one. Yeah. If it was like, well, the first one sucked, the second one was okay, and the third one's bomb. Like that would have been so cool. I'd be like, it's like you didn't really see anything like this. So uh, you know, Sony, I guess at that point, you know, it was 2014, something had them hit the brakes. Yeah. Well, it, they saw it didn't do as well as the first one. Yep. You know, it wasn't uh wasn't gaining any steam mm -hmm. and they saw the money that Marvel was raking in yep. on their connected universe. And they knew like, we've only got Spider-Man. Yep. Yeah. And we've got the Spider-Man characters and that's not enough. They're like, we need to hold on to it for now. Yeah. Let's wait. And then we know what happened after that. You know, as the yeah. story goes, they finally made that deal with Marvel studios, got Tom Holland involved and, that's where we're at now. Oh, yeah. yeah. And now we're in. I mean, how many movies has this guy been in now? This will be like the sixth movie. Six, I think, yeah. And the third Spider-Man film, No Way Home's Coming. Who are we seeing from this Amazing Spider-Man 2 movie? We got Electro. Is it yeah. happening? Jamie Foxx. Apparently so. I mean, per Jamie Foxx. Possibly. I mean, you never know. All Giamatti. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, when, cool. you, when you see the- Calling it out. When you see that, ser that uh, what do you call them? The what six? Sinister, sinister when, Six. When you see the Sinister Six in this movie, like as like you we're see, yeah, you see the suits back there, and well, you're like, and I'm and I'm watching it like in preparation for this movie. I'm kind of going like, are they going to pull all this in, right? Like in some way, and like it will work, and who will they keep, and who won't they? Well, um, they definitely got the highlight of the movie, and that's Jamie Fox. Yes, as and, Electro, and that's what it is. They're bringing back Electro. Are we going to see Andrew Garfield? 
because this is the last Andrew Garfield film. So we need to say now definitively, let's make our calls. Andy, yes or no? No. Scott? I'm going to go yes, just because Andy said no. (laughs) I believe... I believe that maybe yes, and I honestly just feel like I don't want him to be in it. <laughs> like if he if they do bring him in, like I hope it's good because if they do bring him in, it'd be hilarious if it, if he was like bad. Oh yeah, but like it wouldn't be that funny because like I don't want him to ruin the movie. No, <laughs> I mean he's, he's gonna be if they. I, if, I change. You changed. If, if, so you're one of us. If he's, has, one of, one of if us he's gonna to be no. in in No Way Home, is that what you're asking? Yes. Yeah. Okay. You say yes or no. Can I answer tomorrow after no. the trailer? Reveal? No, no. You can do it right <laughs> after the trailer. Absolutely not. You <laughs> call it spot. now. And you know what? Here's what I'll do. I'm going to I'm gonna commit to no. He will not be in it. I, I, I actually, I think it's going to be yes. I think even if they bring him back with Toby to have the classic scene of the three Spider-Men just pointing at each other. <laughs> I, yeah, guess, I guess I if I see them fighting with each other, like that would be kind of cool, just but like very into the Spider Verse, right? Yeah. Like just a bunch of Spider people. Yeah. Um, I I just I just don't need him to be like a part of it. At, oh, that, at, he's not going to be a <laughs> a main focus of the story, and you know this may might sure. be a thing at the very end of the movie, where you know like we got to send these guys back to where they belong, right? And and in swings, two other Spider guys. Right. To take their respective villains back to their universe. It, that's and that's what it is. We gotta get back very much you know, like into the Spider Verse. And we'll we'll have him like, you know, land on the car next to me and he pulls his mask off, like, Oh, Spider Man, oh, you're Spider Man. Like, oh, that one's your guy. Get him out of here. You get him back. Yeah. Like we we'll see you later, Peter. Bye, right? Peter. I mean, I'm I'm nerding out about it. I yeah. think it sounds oh, cool. I'm, yeah. I th- I think, yeah. I, I think if he is in it, he won't be a, a, a major part. Like we could say what, maybe the movie's almost three hours, so yeah, twenty ten, minutes yeah, screen ten, time, ten, ten twenty minute, know. you know, fight scene. But my the thing is, the if they're if they're gonna have Electro and potentially the Lizard, why would they not have them? They're gonna take those villains from this this movie, but not. If, if it were me, and I'm like in the writing room, I'd be like, we just don't really need them. Just get get the villains. But here's here's my question: Didn't almost all of these characters die in their movies? Yeah, but did it, did Electro point, not die? But it also, well, here's the Doc thing. Octopus here's the thing. not That's die? A really good question. So Green I, Goblin I, definitely died. Well, the, I think uh, so. Doc Ock he fell down to the river with the his son. Yeah. So we don't really know. I mean, it showed him. Next. It yeah. showed him. You know, eyes closed, like uh, like uh, oh, also floating Alf- down. Alfred Molina let it slip that his scene in the movie picks up right where that left off. Right. So, like, like okay. he, but like, but even though he looks different, he's wearing like glasses and stuff, yeah. but I guess it could be like right then. And he just like put on some glasses or something. He's fine. Electro. I mean, he just, he, uh, it, he explodes. Yes. Yeah. Zaps out like explainable. Yeah. Because yeah. you could be like, all right, this happened. And then like in that moment, he was pulled from the multiverse. Right. Cause yeah. like, it seems like all of these multiverse one thing we're learning is about like when a multiverse jump happens. Yeah. And we don't know exactly all of it, but like, I mean, spoiler alert for everything that's surrounding this no way home movie, but like with venom and then like, I mean, Loki and then we got Spider-Man like there's WandaVision, like there's all these different things happening. And their big question of the day has been like, is this all happening at once? Right. Or is this like just its own independent little flip? And we I just think, don't know. Uh, I think Marvel has updated their timeline. Like for for watch orders, what what are they? Well, I know they put Shang Chi after Falcon the Winter Soldier, right? And then I think Eter- is Eternals after that. I think Eternals is after that. And I, I mean, that's what I got on the website. So hopefully, we're following Sue. Anything else that they changed? Um, I want to say Loki. Loki happened before. Loki is definitely before. Yeah, yeah. Well, you know how we know this is because of Disney Plus Day, right? And whenever you watch this Marvel featurette, you find out exactly what order the TV shows go in, right? All right, guys, uh, we gave our rating on The Amazing Spider-Man 2, another one for the Sony library. Before we do that, uh, ratings from online, 6.5 out of 10 on IMDb, 52% on Rotten Tomatoes, and a 3 out of 5 on Common Sense. Um, yeah, that's 
that's looking about right, I yeah. guess. It's hard to tell with superhero films always because, I mean, take ratings for what they are. Take them oh, yeah. Hand. You got to take well, them for it with a grain of salt. You get angry nerds out there, and they will do whatever they have to do to give you <laughs> the, the rating that they think you deserve. Right. No no question. No doubt. Um, but you guys can let us know what you think of the movie. That's what we want to know at MostlySuperheroes.com forward slash Sony, where you can find all of these films. The Amazing Spider-Man, the Tobey Maguire Spider-Mans, the Venoms. It's all happening there, and we'll keep filling it up as Sony keeps dropping out their Spider-Man, Spider-Verse. Like, what do they call it? The Sony Spider-Man Sony Spider- Man universe. Spider-Man universe, yeah. yeah. You guys want to hear some quick nuggets about The Amazing Spider-Man 3 and its cancellation? Please. Oh, That's yes. Perfect, perfect book into this one. Yes. Yeah. I got some. This this is blowing my mind, and I wish I would have read this hours ago. So this is from fan. Uh, website called fandom canceled movies wiki Mm -hmm. amazing spider-man 3 was supposed to originally supposed to come out 2016 got pushed back to 2018 was uh, basically canceled because of they thought that he was too old to be spider-man what and also the sony movie like remember that hack that happened like around 2014 oh my gosh i guess that something happened there with that that led to the cancellation of this but listen to the this plot description okay the film said after the events of the movie we just talked about Peter grieves over the death of Gwen and decides to use his blood to revive various people who died while he was still living. Peter would later face off with new villains. Listen to some people that are supposed to be in here. Shailene Woodley as Mary Jane. Uh, Paul Giamatti supposed to come back. Oh, yeah. The rest of the people. Black Cat. Did you say Black Cat earlier? Yeah, Black, Black Cat. Cat. played by Felicity Jones. Mm-hmm. Emma Watson as Jill Stacy. Uh, let's see. Wow. Chris Cooper wow. as Norman Osborn slash Goblin King. Okay. J.K. Simmons as you know who. Oh yeah. Zoe Deschanel as Betty Brant and Zachary Quinto as Mysterio. Mm, what in the uh, world? I would buy that. That's a lot. Zachary that's... Quinto, he's good. I mean, that's a hodgepodge, but I would have watched oh, it. Oh yeah. Um, bringing people back to life is that a comic story, uh, Scotty? Man, I don't know. Talking about like a zombie Gwen Stacy. Yeah, right. <laughs> Something goes terribly wrong. Oh, Maybe that's how she becomes she becomes Spider Gwen. Do it now. I mean, yeah. and <laughs> I mean, we were right too on our our assessment earlier that they just moved in favor of the, the MCU version. So yeah, well, I mean, if they pushed it back to 2018, 2016 was captain America civil war. Right. That's right. And then, and then we got Spider-Man homecoming in 2017. Yeah. And then after they did that, they were like only one more movie with our Spider-Man in it, Mm -hmm. Marvel. And then everybody freaked out and lost it. Oh man. And I was going guys, this, it's all they're, fine. They're going to make it work. They're, the audience is massive. There's there's money involved, a boatload of money. Yes. They'll figure it out. And guess what? They did. Yep. <laughs> we're seeing it now. Uh, the Spider-Verse is real, and we're talking about it. Okay, let's get into it, because there's more Spider-Man ahead. Let's talk about what's coming up. Yeah, a lot of Spider-Man happening on the show. We did it. Thank you, Phase Zero. Thank you, Brandon Davis and the folks over at comicbook.com for inspiring us to do this and to revisit these films, and they're all in that Sony library. I mean, what a great time. Yeah. Talking about these Toby films, talking about these films, and not only talking about them and reliving them over the last you know 20 years of, of these movies, but um, being able to pull out certain characters and theorize about them being in this movie I'm still just nerding out so hard about it. I'm going to call it right now. We're going to see Paul Giamatti's Rhino in the movie. No Way Home. You watch it. All right. Right. Yes. <laughs> I'm going to boo that one. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Terrible. Oh, man. Uh, yeah, but you went for it. and I, I respect that. But, I don't. Uh, you got to shoot your shot. Yeah. You got to go for it. But I think we might get an Electro. We were getting Doc Ock. Uh, we're probably going to get Tobey Maguire. We don't know if we're going to get uh, Andrew Garfield. Um, we might be getting green the, goblin, the green goblin, the lizard. I mean, they are definitely showing off the goblin. Yeah. The question is, he's there. He's there. He, you got, you got the bombs. You hear the laughing. Is it William Defoe? I think so. I think, I think it's going to be, cause it'd be kind of weird if it was like, I mean, unless it was like Harry, like for like James Franco and I like mean, Toby and him have a moment. That's what I'm saying. Like Willem Defoe's character was definitely dead at the end of Spider-Man one. Yes. Yeah. Yes, well, I mean it could be a different universe. Any could it's have been multiverse, right. etc. It's a multiverse. You never know. Infinite. I feel like there's just no, no bounds. Right. For so, what's about uh, to happen. I mean, characters that died, we could get them. Yes, it's. They, I think so too. I think they could like easily just make a comeback. Like here right. they are. They're part of this now. Um, but essentially, I feel like we're getting 
Spider-Man into the Spider-Verse, almost like the live version, live action. but mixed with the Marvel Universe. So like Doctor Strange obviously playing a critical role. Um, and man, I just can't wait. December yeah. 17th. I mean, it's we're creeping up four well, weeks, four weeks. It got moved up to the 15th in the UK. I oh, think that's lucky. like, let's go. Lucky. Guess Brits. I bought my plane tickets. <laughs> um, and speaking of the animated movie, I thought we should really book in the last of the Sony Spider-Man films, Spider-Man into the Spider-Verse. Man, this one's great. What do you I guys think? To watch it again. I, I like this idea. You, you guys want to do a, a watch and review retell of this one? Absolutely. You have our rating on this animated flick that just won so many awards. It's got a sequel in the making. And uh, man, yeah, I love this movie. So I think what we'll do, we'll watch this after Thanksgiving. Mm -hmm. Okay, before we move on, uh, mark, book your calendars after Thanksgiving. Get ready for Spider-Man Into the Spider-Verse. Watch it. Come back and listen to us. And then... Also, MCU Town, talking about Spider-Man No Way Home, December 17th, it's coming. And the week of Thanksgiving, this week, just in a few days, you get the premiere of Hawkeye. Yes. He's coming in. Two episodes, I believe. I think so, yeah. And if you, we just talked about Disney Plus day to day. Go back and watch the features on Disney Plus. Watch the premiere 14-minute thing that ties all these shows together. There's also a new Marvel Legends, the behind, not the behind the scenes, the uh, recap of Hawkeye story. So from again, it's one of the longest ones they've done. They're usually like six minutes or so. This one's 10 minutes. Yeah. And it gives you the full scoop on like this character, everything he's been through. So it'll get you primed and ready. I really love that Marvel's doing this because it's just like, you know, you need something to catch people up. Yeah. And also just for new fans that are like, who's this character? Uh, if you're wondering, go watch Marvel Legends on Dis Disney Plus. But then Hawkeye, here we go. Haley Stein Haley Steinfeld, Jeremy Renner. Uh, we're going to get the Christmas Hawkeye show. Uh, yeah. Scotty, are you excited? Oh, Rogers the musical. Rogers. How, how could you not be excited? 100%. The trailer, I saw that and I was like, surely <laughs> they'll give us like little tidbits of that. Oh man. Andy, how so. you, how you feel about this one, Andy? You know, I'm I'm lukewarm. Yeah. Hawkeye's never been like he's just been good but not great for me always. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, I don't even know why. I think it's just he's he's a human that shoots arrows. He's kind of like the sixth man. Like, you know, basketball reference there. Yeah. Right? For all wow. use. Off the bench. And just, you know, he does a good job and he plays his part. But you're right. It's like but he's not LeBron. I think, though, like like the fact that, I don't know, this like, Rogers the musical, like you just said, it's Christmas. I think I think it, it has potential to be like a, a like a, a secret weapon, maybe. Yeah. And also, like what we've heard is like this is a very much going to be like on the ground Marvel show. Yeah. You know, I mean, we just saw Eternals. You know, so now like here we go on yeah. the opposite end of the spectrum, taking it back to the streets, taking it back to the streets. I like it. And then after this, man, Spider-Man. And then after the new year, I got to make a new slide for all the Marvel stuff that we're going to see in 2022. Wow. Season three of us. Is mostly, gonna be mostly superheroes, baby. Lit AF. Yeah, it's just going to be going off the charts and not to mention all the Star Wars stuff, the DC Star stuff Wars, that's popping yeah. out. We're just on Marvel today. You know, right. there's a lot of <laughs> other things happening out here. Um, and then the last piece, we talked about it last week, but just to remind you folks right here before uh, Thanksgiving holiday that we got the new merch store with Bonfire, new designs, new styles at mostly superheroes.com forward slash merch. I think that everyone in this room has bought some stuff. Absolutely. I think I saw that's your some, names coming in. Some fresh looking uh, duds we got there. Yeah, Scotty, Andy, pre appreciate you guys supporting the show and uh, repping the merch. And uh, you got something to get your uh, your family, your friends, some gifts out there, mostly superheroes.com forward slash merch. All new designs, retro, our uh, metal, the college look, and the classic looks. Go check them all out. And I can't wait to you guys uh, for you guys to get wearing mostly superheroes on your body. Man, number 47. <sighs> Approaching the end of the oh. year. Oh, go back to the Marvel slide. We got we to gotta finish up on... Uh... What? Scott's oh, Scott's, oh uh, good uh, call. Wow, I not... we almost missed it. <sighs> so, guys, we're probably going to close out this agreement, disagreement <laughs> we had long debate. about Eternals. So we're going to give it again. Spoiler alert for Eternals. We have to do that. Um, but the, we're, we talked about this during fan mail. Scotty, tell us what actually happened. The, 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 the debate is, did Arisham pull up three or four people? Folks, what's, where's everybody set? I think he's pulled up three people, and three? Sprite was not included because Sprite is a human now. Agreed. You are correct. Yes. <laughs> and the real shout-out goes to 
the viewer on YouTube, our newest fan, Emmanuel. Yep. Yep. Because uh, he said he saw it, he remembered, um, and Scotty, thanks for looking that up. Do you remember where you found it? Uh, just a Google search. Just a regular Google feed. Yep. Um, told right. me told me right away. How do you feel? Uh, devastated. <laughs> just real <laughs> disappointed in That's, myself. I'm going to go watch the movie again right after we get out of the studio. I mean, that sounds pretty good. Maybe yeah. I'll join you. <laughs> Can't wait to see this one in IMAX at home. Uh, thanks for looking that up. Now we finally know. So, so really, Eternals, Sprites back on earth just like i'm a human and who where, knows where are my friends right does she have powers or does she not i don't think so i think that was like the whole thing like she was like here i touched you and now she's like i'm a human okay i, I think. think so yeah i would i think i agree we'll find out in a couple of years i'm sure yeah we'll find out probably <laughs> even probably sooner than that yeah. even um all right guys yeah thanksgiving week i mean i'll just say it before we kick ourselves out of here but Super thankful. Thankful for both of you guys. Thankful for all you fans and listeners. Um, we're going to be taking a week off. Yeah. So you're going to be getting this episode right here on Thanksgiving week. And we hope that you spend some time with your family. Take a break. That's what I'll be doing. And uh, Scotty, thanks for coming in and doing Spider-Man with us. Yeah, super thankful for the invite uh, week after week. Yeah. And having a great time. Yeah, have you back? Yeah. Come back again. Sounds like we might have you as a recurring fo- uh, person. I'm even, uh, I've even made it kind of semi-serious. I put you on the website. On the website. You made it into our Mostly Superheroes ads, even. Oh, it's you, official. It's official. Can't get rid of me now. If you don't if you don't mind, we'd love to have you back as much as you want. And, uh, oh, I'm here. We got some big stuff to wrap up at the end of the year. Yeah. Have a good Thanksgiving, dude. Giggler? As well. Did you have a good time? Yes, I always do. Those tacos were a great start to the day. Yeah. Oh, yeah. We had nice tacos for dinner. Slow cooker tacos. Shout out, Carrie. Well done. And I thought I was going to just kind of just zonk out, fall asleep during this episode, but... The content is too good. We just kept you two alive. Yeah. Hey, rise of Electro. <laughs> rise of the Giggler. Yeah, the rise. The rise. Re- okay. You ready for your Thanksgiving? So ready. Got to figure out how to cook a turkey, but we'll get there. You will. That's right. And uh, listeners, viewers, thank you guys so much. Appreciate you guys doing contests, getting more people online, viewing our stuff on YouTube, on Facebook, listening to where you get your podcast. We appreciate you talking about us and supporting your favorite independent podcast. A lot happening the rest of the year. We'll see you after the Thanksgiving break. Go have fun. Enjoy your family. Enjoy your friends. And we'll see you next time here in the studio in St. Louis, Missouri. I'm mostly superheroes. Take it easy. <laughs>